Welcome you to the rest of the week. Actually, it is only Tuesday. Seems like it might be later for some of you, but uh, we are ready to roll. Yesterday, uh, pretty weird. No more f- feet talk. Anyway, welcome back to the program here on a Tuesday. We get closer to the NFL draft. That will certainly be one of the big themes of today's show with one of the best players in the draft and one of the smartest analysts. But let us begin with some headlines. Florida literally building for the future. This is according to Gridiron Now, and the present looks just fine. This is Tony Barnhart's piece talking about Jim McElwain as he begins to enter year three. Two pretty good years so far. SI is Peter King, and you will see him later right here. He predicts no Alabama player will go in the draft's top ten. That is a bit of an upset considering Jonathan Allen, O.J. Howard, and Reuben Foster have both, of all, excuse me, been mentioned as possibilities. Speaking of the tide, uh, the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium, open air, retractable roof, well, according to the AJC, the roof will be closed. First of all, we don't even know if the stadium will be ready, but even if it is, if it, assuming it is, the roof will not be open. We welcome you back. A busy, busy day yesterday. Laura was here, a good bit of the show. Charles from Realtown stole the show, sticking his foot in his mouth, never to be uh, seen again. We will get to your phone calls for a good bar, part of our program in a moment. I uh, mentioned uh, Peter King, one of the uh, premier sp- sports writers in America for many, many years. He will be with us. Reuben Foster will also join us. We'll pass along any other news and your phone calls at 855-242-7285. But uh, for the, big, the better part of the program, it is about you. We had seven or eight guests yesterday. Uh, the, uh, outside of the uh, Charles call, it, it, we didn't have a lot of time, but we will try to make that up. So if you would like to get in, now is your time to do it, 855-242-7285. Also, uh, Tommy Tuberville, rumored to be running for governor of Alabama, announced today he is not going to run. So Tuberville, after... A brief dalliance with the race. He was scheduled to run as a Republican, has decided he will do whatever ex-coaches do. We don't know yet what that will be. 855-242-7285. That is our phone number. Let us begin with Peyton in Houston, Texas. Hello, Peyton. Hey, Paul. How's it going? Uh, We are doing great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I know there's been a lot of talk about who's going to be the best quarterback in the SEC next year with, you know, kind of consensus being Jalen Hurts. And I heard one caller mention Drew Locke the other week. But, you know, Nick Fitzgerald, I would say Dan Mullen's probably the best quarterback coach in the conference. And Nick Fitzgerald led the conference in a total offense. I was just wondering, where's the love for Nick Fitzgerald? Well, I certainly think there, there, there is. I mean, you have a number of quarterbacks from uh, Allen to Fitzgerald, uh, certainly Hurts, uh, Eason. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of, lot of quarterbacks that uh, are, are well-respected. I, I don't think it's a matter of uh, lack of love. I just think that uh, he came on, uh, Jake Bentley. Uh, I mean, I, I just think he's in that bunch and someone will emerge. All right, yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because I know he's kind of been flying under the radar, and I know uh, he came Well, I mean, that's what happens, though, when your team has a losing record. You don't get a lot of love because yep. uh, the team around you uh, doesn't really hold you up. No, I mean, I hear you on that for sure. But anyway, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. Appreciate well, thank you very much. I'm really glad to hear from you. Uh, Clarence is up next in the ATL. Hello, Clarence. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Paul. Yeah, you know, Paul, I want to comment on something that uh, you used to our city, you know, our day so, you know, about um, the Joe Mason, Caleb Brantley, and right. these athletes who committed domestic violence and stuff. And like I told you before, I'm totally against that. But what I'm also against is like a double double jeopardy situation. 
we might all disagree with how ball students and these college coaches have handled the situation, but I think it's wrong for anyone to try to further punish these guys in the NFL. It's up to the NFL owners to punish the players. Well, hold on. Let me make sure I understand uh, exactly uh, which person or, or whom you are referring to. Uh, I think her last name was... Oh, uh, Kavisa um, Davidson, the, the the lady we had on yesterday. Uh, you know, listen, I mean, that's her opinion. Uh, she's a very right. uh, uh, well-respected uh, advocate. But, I mean, I, I you, you forget her. You can talk to me uh, because I, I've been pretty critical of, of Joe Mixon as well. But you are correct, regardless of what any of us say, ultimately the NFL will make that decision. I mean, he is certainly going to be right. undervalued. Uh, do right. I think someone will take a chance on him? Yes. Will it create a, a, a hue and, and cry? Of course. But in the right. end, uh, nobody is going to care the next day because uh, he's a football player and most, most people will move past that. Yeah, and my thing, Paul, is very simple. It's like the punishment is during the draft process. If Joe Mixon, who's clear to me a first-round talent, doesn't get drafted in the first round, he's already lost millions of dollars right there. Well, you're That's right it. about that. Uh, you, know, and, and, you know, pro football is a short career, uh, especially at that position. So uh, the question then becomes, can he make it up? Usually it's the second contract, unless right. you're the first player taken or, or one of the first. But, uh, you know, that, that train has left the station a long time ago. It's not uh, – what, 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 what she said yesterday, Clarence, isn't the issue. I, I think the person that cost Joe Mixon – millions of dollars you know who it is i think it's i I think i think it's bob stoops because if bob stoops had done the right thing and kicked joe mixon out of out of school and had he gone somewhere else he would have had a fresh start instead you know leaving him uh hanging out to dry for a year and then coming back with the stigma over him and never really dealing with it until after his playing days were over what what turned out to be a big mistake in, in in my mind and i think it's pretty evident that uh, it's costing Joe Mixon today. When, when you're in trouble, the best thing to do is, is, is excise the, uh, the tumor as quickly as possible. In Mixon's case, everyone was complicit. That story dragged on, and he is the big loser other than the young lady who, uh, who, who was the victim in this case. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Jim is in South Carolina. Hello, Jim. Hello there. Hi there. I'm sorry? Yeah, go right ahead, Jim. You're on the air. Oh, okay, yeah. How did the Alabama play? I've had a stroke, so give me a break, please. Take your your time. Uh, How did Alabama training show up this past week? As far as, you know, are they improved? Are they having well, problems? Jim, with Jim you know, I, th- I think the answer to your question is we don't really know. Right. Because uh, the spring games are more of a showcase for the fans. They, they are not a true indicator. The coaches uh, know, know who, 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 is, who is going to be successful and who, won't, who probably won't be. Uh, that will be determined uh, between now and the beginning of the season. So, I, I mean, I, I don't think you can really tell very much unless you look out there and don't see any football players. In Alabama's case, I think anyone watching that game saw a lot of really good football players, uh, many, many very young, uh, such as uh, Najee Harris, the, the freshman. But, but in the end, I, I don't know if, uh, if we know a lot more today than we did a week ago. Okay, I, I missed it yesterday, and I tried again today to you know find out. And I appreciate your taking my call. Thank you very it, much. It, it I, is I, a I, pleasure, it's you know, a pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot. Call again. Look forward to it. Millie is up next. Uh, Millie, go right ahead. Hi, Paul. Uh, it's good to see that you guys are above water today. Yeah, it's been raining for about three days, but uh, so far uh, we haven't gone two by two in the ark. Okay, great. I'm happy to hear that. And you guys were talking about feet yesterday quite a bit uh, when you had that gentleman on the phone for quite a while. And I wanted to tell you one thing. You know, the, the way I feel about feet is this. 
as long as I've got two feet that I can walk on and be able to maneuver around all on my own, I'm pretty happy. Considering the fact not too terribly long ago, I almost lost my right foot. So uh, that's why I, I wanted to comment about feet, that they're important. And uh, number two is, uh, I guess uh, there's congratulations in order with you guys. Uh, Peter Burns is going to be a father. Well, congratulations. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah, uh, Laura had it on her program last night. Well, we certainly will uh, pass along our congratulations to Peter when we see him. Way to go, Peter. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, he, it's going to be a little girl. Uh, oh, how wonderful. That's what I found out. Uh, so I guess I'm bringing some news into to you guys too, right? Yeah, you know, I... I uh, I, I, I've, maybe I heard it out of, the, out of the corner of my ear, or maybe I didn't. I'm trying to remember, but uh, I'm glad you brought that out, and uh, we'll certainly, when we see Peter, we'll uh, wish him well. Yeah, and tell him that I hope that everything goes well for his wife. And I want to mention something else that is really cool. Is, uh, I think uh, uh, John is really beginning to look rather savvy in his new beard. Oh, he has a beard? Well, John, of course, does. He's got a really nice one. Haven't you noticed? I thought I thought the last time I looked at John, he had shaved. Well, he did, but now he's got a he's let it grow John, back. Uh, and John, I think, do you have a beard? Uh, John has a savvy beard. He actually does. I, uh, yeah, I, it, shows you how, it shows you how stupid I am. I, I I thought Mark had a beard and John didn't. Well, the interesting thing well, is, Melly. Oh, you know, the thing of it is, uh, on the show, I know you watch. I know you enjoy beards, so I grew one. Uh, if I'm going to well, go home to see my grandmother or my aunt, they prefer me clean shaven. So uh, well, this one is for that. you. I can understand that. But uh, and even uh, when Mark had his beard, he looked pretty sh uh, nifty too in it. So. Mark looked like. Whoa, Millie! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hi. Anyway, the thing of it is, is that uh, you really look cool with it, and, and I hope. Uh, hey, Millie. Maybe... No, Millie. Let me, uh, what about you? Think. What do you think I would look like with a beard? Well, I think you'd look rather savvy with one, but I don't. Th I don't know how your wife would feel about it. Uh, I do. She doesn't like them. She doesn't. Though. Well, then I guess then that answers that question. Well, I mean, I, I have right? two. Cho I have two choices, Millie. I, yep. I could uh, remain uh, clean shaven or find a new wife. Well, uh, don't ever think that because your eyes sparkle every time you talk <laughs> about her. So don't do it, okay? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And by the way, Any Millie, I wasn't being literal. I was just being facetious, of course. Well, anyway, uh, I'm just making a so brief you call today. obviously enjoyed the joke. Uh, stay out of the water and everything. And uh, remember, if you see a, a, a dealy, turn around, don't drown, okay? Okay. I know the when rain has drive. stopped, Millie. I think we're, I think we're done for, the, for a couple of days. Okay. We'll talk to you guys. Listen, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good, wonderful day today, okay? Thank you, Millie. Au revoir. Bye -bye. Uh, we'll take a break. <laughs> And uh, come back. More of your phone calls at 855-242-7285. Welcome back to the program. We're, uh, more, we're continuing with more of your calls, 855-242-7285. We have uh, Peter King a little bit later on. Also, Reuben Foster. Let's uh, continue with more calls right now. And Garrett is up next. Uh, hello, Garrett. Hey, Paul, big fan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so with all the problems with Rue Foster after being dismissed from the combine and then the drug test incident, how bad do you think this hurts him in the draft? Uh, there's no, and by the way, he'll be with us a little bit later on. There's no doubt it's hurt him. I don't think it's going to knock him out of the first round, but uh, I'm guessing it's going to knock him down a few, uh, a few pegs. Uh, thank you for the call. Charles is up next from Real Town. How you doing? Charles, uh, how are you doing? I'm a little concerned about you after yesterday. Why are you concerned about me for? Well, I thought you made a fool out of yourself on I the don't, show. What happened to my call? Well, uh, you, we, were, we, we hooked you up with a very uh, smart, sensible young lady, and you, you embarrassed yourself by asking oh, her did. about her. You was laughing harder than anybody. Well, I was laughing. I didn't say it. let you see her feet. What's that? And then I went on a break. You come back out, and she done had enough of that. She stopped that, and you told her I had the ability to uh, just turn the show around. 
Well, what happened? Well, I just thought it was, pretty, it was a pretty ridiculous statement to make. Uh, considering Why are you it, laughing so hard? Say well, I had because your of, to turn the show around. You even asked to let her let you see her feet. I'm I didn't. No, I didn't ask. To, I did not ask to see her feet. Yes, uh, you Charles. did do it. Don't you lie to me, boy. <sighs> you said it. And at the end of the show, old John Hayes said, "What's the one thing we don't want to talk about on this show?" He looked at you. And you said, "According to Twitter, feet." Y'all threw me under the bus, and I don't like it. Hmm. Sorry, Charles. So, so, sorry. We'll buy you a pedicure to make up for it. Rick is up next in uh, Florida. Hello, Rick. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Well, what I wanted to call and ask you about, what, what have you took away from uh, the Georgia spring game? And what do you feel about this upcoming season, what they might be able to do with the, with the new players that they got? Yeah, as far as, thanks for the call. As far as George is concerned, I, I didn't take a lot away other than uh, what little I could tell from Fromm was that he, he's still young, and, uh, and I, think, I think we expected him to be young considering he is a freshman. Uh, I really do like Jacob Eason. I think he has a lot of uh, compliments around him both uh, in, in the skilled positions, what, what, what people that were there saw uh, that I maybe probably couldn't tell on television as well. But uh, it looks to me like the defense, uh, the offensive line is a little bit better and it looks like the defense is going to be a, a notch above last year. Thank you for the call. Appreciate it. Let's uh, check in with Larry in Georgia. Hello, Larry. Hey, Paul. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I, I wanted to ask you a question about, uh, you know, you had a caller, um, I don't know, a few weeks ago, some, the guy that never gives the right name, and uh, and he was trashing uh, uh, ladies calling sports. Yes. And, uh, but, and you know, what do you think? Um, and I think uh, Laura is probably one of the best uh, personalities I've heard on TV in a long time that's come up. Uh, of course, the exception being you, uh, but uh, but one of the great, uh, I think, genuine people on that uh, that's in sports that I've heard lately. And uh, it, do you think is there a, uh, is there anything in the works that might get her uh, in the press box uh, doing play by play one day? You know, it's a good question. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, and I've really never asked Laura if that's something that she is interested in. She, uh, she well, one thing I, that I've always been impressed about her uh, is that she 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 not only has a great knowledge of the game. A lot of people understand the players and the personnel, but she she has an uh, an ability to describe and and, and discourse her her knowledge. Uh, yeah, and disseminate it uh, in in a way that is that is that is easy to understand. And I think too many too many times people fail to communicate from that standpoint. I think she's one of the best uh, uh, personalities I've ever been around, and well, I, uh, I, and I'm glad you feel the same way. I do. I, I just she comes across genuine. She, well, she and, is. And yeah, heard, and that's who she know, is. And I've, and I've heard uh, I've heard both male and females in the press box that almost kind of press they're they're like they're trying to be somebody they're not uh and she just comes across like real and, well uh, that, that, yeah, larry uh in our business uh we're always encouraged to be real to be authentic the problem is if you're doing something that is beyond your comfort level you can't be i mean if you put me in the booth with Chris Fowler on Saturday night, I wouldn't have a clue. Uh, I mean, I watch football. I, I love it. I feel like I have some general understanding, but but I'm not I'm not qualified to break down a play like Kirk Herb Street is. So you would hear me uh, scrambling. Um, so 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 the bottom line is you you have to be put into positions to be successful, and I think too often people uh, think they know what they want to do, and they end up getting in a spot where they're they're really not qualified. We're capable. Well, thanks, Paul. I just, I just, I hope one day they'll. If Laura would like to, I would. Yeah, love I, I, to I, I will her. say this, and and I, I would rank uh, among her her biggest fans in the world that 
Uh, she could pretty much do anything she wants in this business. It's just a matter of, at a very young age, deciding where she wants to go. And I don't think she has to know that yet. <laughs> but she'll find it, and she'll, <laughs> she'll be very successful. We will take a break. More of your phone calls, assuming I can speak, when we come back. With us, folks from radio are now uh, rejoining us, and we uh, will grab some more calls. Squirrel is up next. You know, that Laura Charles segment yesterday, in all, in all honesty, was probably the most, was one of the funniest segments you've ever had on your show at any time over the years. I mean, where do you think that ranks? Uh, I mean, I think Squirrel, because it just completely and totally caught me and everyone else by surprise made it even funnier it was, it was the funniest i mean you would have expected I... charles to say something inarticulate chauvinistic <laughs> but i never expected him to go for the full feet. blown yeah yeah and then did he call back wanting to continue to talk about it he, he did that? he did <laughs> great yeah that, that that's a little overboard right there um and, but, and that was funny, and, that's, and I had called in to chat with Laura yesterday, which brings me to the second part of my call. What year did you go on satellite radio? I believe Seriously. it was... Uh, 2008? Uh, maybe about a year later. I, I think that, I think that was somewhere, yeah, in that area. somewhere in that area. I used to call in once or twice a year when you were on AM and FM, because you know, it's hard to get you to go over here in the city at times. But once you went on satellite, I called in a little more. In, in TV, maybe slightly more at times. In hunting seasons, you know, maybe I don't call in at all during hunting season. But do you realize yesterday was the first time you ever raised your voice or hollered at me? Well, uh, and, and for that, I'm sorry, Squirrel. It, it, was, <laughs> no, I, no, I, I, it wasn't I, that I, I raised my voice. It, I raised it to such a decimal level that I can hardly talk today. You were hollering so loud, <laughs> that, you know, when you're on the phone listening. And you may not relate to this because, again, you're not on the end of the phone. It's kind of a blur from this end. And while you were hollering at me one point, you know what, what thought came into my mind? He's hollering at me just like he hollered at D. Snyder for Twisted Sister. <laughs> but, uh, I swear that's well, what the, I was thinking. Well, the thing that I didn't understand is, uh, I mean, I had some friend of mine said, yeah, are, you, are, are, your medic, are, your, are, your med, are your meds out of sorts? And I'm thinking, I'm not on any. And he said, maybe you should be. <laughs> no, nah, man. Hey, everybody has their moments, and everybody needs to go off on somebody once in a while. And that's why I told you, I, I think you were getting the wrong. First of all, everyone is, and I'm saying, I'm not being a smart ass when I say this. Uh, everyone is not as articulate as you. You are the most articulate people on there. And some of us may be thinking one thing, and we have a hard time finding the right words to convey our thoughts. And so, therefore, it's easy for you to misinterpret where we're going or what we mean. I mean, I could see that happening. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of what happened yesterday because, again, there was no way I would ever defend this guy. Well, I I know, and by the way, it wasn't personal toward you. It was. Oh, um, I know that. I didn't take it personally. You know, I, I, I think so. I think in all it candor, uh, Squirrel, and, and I, I say this because I think in, in this show you have to be as transparent. I mean, if you come in here sick, uh, people know it. Uh, if you yeah. come in here, uh, you know, feeling, I mean, you, you can't, you can't hide on a program like this. Uh, I'm not sure what set me off uh, other than it's a very, <laughs> it's a sensitive issue to me uh, because I have a lot well, of friends, but, but, but I, I even, even a day too. later, I don't know why I, I reacted in the manner you know, that you I misinterpreted did. where I was going. Cause yeah. I, you know, like I said, when I said the word play football players are trained to be violent and that's where you went off and I can see why you would. And I, and I completely understand that. And I thought, and then you used the word aggressive. And then I said during the conversation, well, maybe that's a word I should use aggressive. And then I thought about it yesterday and I, I said, no, violent is what I mean because, and, and here's two examples, and these are football examples right here. And, and what people don't realize is that you just don't have like spring training and two a days and then fall practice. You have what they call winter workouts. And that's where a lot of this craziness goes on is that period right after Christmas and before spring training for like major high schools, major colleges, and things of that nature. And if you do a drill, let's say in spring training or during fall training, and I was a defense back coach, so let's say you do a drill where they teach you to, on a run play, to come up and establish yourself at the line, take on your blocker, shed your blocker, and make the tackle. That's, that's a drill teaching you to be aggressive. Would you agree with yes, that? Yes, I would. Okay, all right. Now, in winter workouts, when they take you into a place and they give you a pair of gloves and they say, we want you to fight three one-minute rounds toe-to-toe, 
nose to nose. If you dance around, we're starting to blow in the whistle. We're starting all over. There's no football training in that. That's teaching you to be violent, in my opinion. It's teaching you to be able to hurt somebody because that's what you're doing when you're beating the hell out of somebody, trying to get not beat up, and you're trying to beat the hell out of them at the same time. I mean, I'm telling you, I experienced these. I witnessed it, and I know other people who did. And this may be, like I said, a throwback from the 70s because that was during my time. My question at the end of my discussion yesterday was, I don't know what these players are going through nowadays, but it seems like this stuff is more and more prevalent. So my question is, are they being trained in a way that some of these guys can't handle? Is, is, and I don't know. That was an honest question I had. But, you know, like I said, you misinterpreted that I was trying to defend this cat. And I'm not. There, there's no excuse for hitting a woman. And, and I've always lived by that motto. And uh, so I'm not asking for apology. I wanted to apologize to you uh, for raising my voice because one reason we've never had any squabbles over these years is because when I call in, this is entertainment to me, the show is, and it always has been, and these callers are entertainment to me. And I usually comment on callers. I don't comment on sports things because you get enough boring sports questions. I don't want to add to the mix. But – I respect to – this is, to me, this is entertainment, but this is your livelihood. This is your, your job, and I always respected that. And I'm, I would never well, – I never appreciate had that. By, by the me. way, let, let, me, let me get your comments on the call after your call. On, on, uh, on my favorite leg number, Jim? Correct. Uh, Where well, he called me a menace to society? <laughs> I, mean, I, I think, on, I think he suggested you should be arrested or something. Uh, yeah, well, like I said – I'm driving down I-55. I just left the DuPont plant up in Millington, Tennessee. You know where that's at. I sure do. And, and uh, South Memphis making that long drive back to Jackson. And I'm listening to callers. I listen on hold, listen. I'm waiting to talk to Laura. Then I come on. And, and so I wasn't prepared to talk about this subject. I didn't want to be rude to say, hey, I'm going to talk to Laura. I'll talk to you later. Bye. So when Jim came on and chastised me, well, that was the, there was pluses and minuses to my call. Now, that was one of the pluses because, you know, the minus was, I actually felt like all of a sudden I was like having a Perry Mason moment. I felt like you were like Perry Mason, Ironsides, and uh, Matlock all combined into one grilling me there. And, and that's an uncomfortable position to be in. But, again, I'm a big boy, and when you call into this show, some days you're the rat and some days you're the cheese. You know what I mean? Well, I will say this, girl. Uh, afterwards, my doctor put me on voice rest for 18 hours. <laughs> But, but, no, anything Leg Humper says about me, I, I take that with a great assault. But the plus of the call was you had read me a, a Twitter from him Thursday or Friday saying that he, we were all rednecks and he was quitting the show and never yeah. calling in again. And that call spurred him to call in to you and him had a Jim Paul moment. So that was the plus side of my call. So, again, apologize for raising my voice. Enjoy the show. Oh, and, and a lot. I'll tell you what Aloha means for Jim since he's so curious about that. And, again, I'm not trying to be cute or funny. I actually have been to Hawaii, uh, not that that matters. But uh, when Alabama got put on that two-year probation, you remember years ago when they got put on that two-year oh, bowl ban? Uh, yeah, they did go when to Hawaii Shula? two years in a row, sure. So they scheduled Hawaii the last game of the year. Do you recall that? Uh, yeah, Dennis Franchoni, sure. Yeah, okay. I call into a local radio show here on a regular basis, and these people hate me because I'm the the Alabama fan they love to hate. That burnt them up so bad that Alabama, they thought that wasn't fair. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. So as a stick in the eye to them, at the end of my calls, I would say aloha. And that irritated these people around here, and it's just kind of a habit to carry it on. It's not trying to be funny or cute, Jim, or anything of that nature. So, uh, again, thanks for taking my call. Enjoyed the show yesterday. Enjoy today. Aloha. Shalom. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Karen is up next in California. Hello, Karen. Hi, Paul. How are you doing today? Uh, very well. Thanks a lot. Good, good. I just wanted to re- respond uh, about uh, the Warren Sapp comments. I do agree with you, you know, to your response to it, because, uh, you know, there's no reason for him to call Miles Garrett lazy i think that was wrong of him to do that and how can you call someone lazy and they're the first pick whether they're the first second or third they're a hard-working player well listen uh i'm not i mean i'm the one who criticized them on national television today but these guys are are looking for headlines uh i mean warren sapp is an irrelevant 
Hall of Fame football player who has not been seen or heard from, and, and the reason for that is by, by, his own, uh, by his own mistakes and by his own lack of character. So when someone grabbed him the other day, he, he was at least smart enough to know that if he gave uh, an honest opinion, uh, no one would care. It's just another ex-football player giving an opinion. So he, 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 uh, he went for broke. And I, I do think he is an expert on one thing, and that's being lazy. So that's the only credibility I'll give him in this regard. Right, right, right. And, and I did want, you know, remember a couple of weeks ago, uh, Booger was on, but he was also on, uh, it was either ESPN Sports Center or Mike and Mike. Right. And Miles um, uh, Garrett was going, making his rounds. Um, on all the sets, and he said he had some current concerns about, uh, you know, he had watched the no, he tape. He did, yeah. And, I mean, he, and, and then yeah. you know, Miles, Miles got mad about that. Yeah, and I know that Booger would, I mean, know a lot more than Warren said because Booger, you know, studies the film. So yeah, he The only thing Warren and Booger have in common uh, is that they played on the same uh, Tampa Bay team. But beyond that, no, I, I would uh, I would definitely take Booger's uh, acumen uh, a little bit higher than, than Warren Sapp's. Uh, thank you for the call. Appreciate it very much. For those watching on uh, television, which I would hope are, are many of you, we will play uh, the Mike and Mike segment coming up here in just a few minutes. For those of you on radio, you can be rest assured it was entertaining. We'll be right back. Everybody back from radio. Uh, first questioner of the uh, afternoon uh, has asked me, and uh, we, we pose the question back to you. Who do you think is the first, best quarterback in the SEC? Uh, for those of you watching, we are running your tweets right now on the bottom of the screen. That's something that we try to do often, so all the more reason to uh, follow us at Feinbaum and tweet at us at Feinbaum as well when we pose questions like that. Let's uh, check in with Greg, who is up next uh, hello greg hey paul thanks for taking my call thank you um you know i, I offered uh i found a submarine for uh charles from real town to go to but apparently <laughs> he never showed up because uh he was on the phone yesterday um but the reason i called is last week friday you had a gentleman who calls from uh, shaw air force base in uh yes, South yes, Carolina. Riot. yeah and he uh, had a conversation with you about um, assessing um, Nick Saban's uh, effectiveness as a coach based on the number of NFL players he has. And you, you, you know, discussed that with him back and forth. And if the value of a coach was based on how many guys he got into the NFL, then Les Miles would still be coaching the Tigers in LSU. He sure would be. If you're going to use that logic. And so it goes to the psychology of callers. And, you know, callers are fans. And um, when you are consistently losing to someone in any sport or event, then you focus on the most trivial of things that gives you comfort. And so he takes comfort in the fact that Les Miles has six more players in the NFL right now than Nick Saban does, whereas – you know, I would say the average Alabama fan is more concerned about winning championships. Would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, it would be. I mean, it is important. It's a, it's a barometer of how successful your program is. I think it's been said before, but in 2008, uh, which was at the end of Nick Saban's first year, Alabama did not have a single player, not a single one taken in the NFL draft. I think since then Saban is uh, close to 20 players taken just in the first round. So, yeah, but, but, but it doesn't always equate directly to your success on the field because sometimes you'll have a number of players. Sometimes, I mean, Alabama last year I don't think had a first-rounder, but they were coming off a national championship team and also right. had a Heisman Trophy winner on the team. Yes, and so, um, so I would venture to say that most Alabama fans are content for the moment with a number of – um, alumni who are playing in the NFL and are more concerned with the four championships that Nick Saban has brought to state. Greg, uh, I'm sure you've years. heard the, the line about law that if, if you have the 
if, if, you, if you don't have the facts, uh, you know, scream and holler and, and make a bunch of noise. And right. if you do have the facts, you really can speak softly. And, 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 and when, you're, when you're a fan, you choose your own facts. Uh, and and you, you allow those facts to support your argument, whatever it is. But at the end right. of at the end of the conversation, uh, you can't argue Les Miles versus Nick Saban. That 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 train left a long, long time ago. Right. So um, so I, I just thought it was interesting to hear that, and he sounded kind of terse in his in his voice. He was really perturbed that, uh, and maybe it was the comment that someone else had said earlier that eight and four was an excellent season for them, uh, for LSU. Um, that kind of set him off, but. Um, I think that if LSU fans get back to accepting nine and three seasons as good seasons, they should be all right. Well, I think you're, I think you're uh, absolutely right about that. Uh, and thank you for the call. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good to hear from you. Uh, we will continue uh, as we uh, work our way. Uh, I may have been. I think. I think Alabama may have had one player in the draft uh, last year. I was double checking that. May not have. I can't remember. But uh, uh, regardless of that, um, we are going to. Uh, yeah, Ryan Kelly was a, was a, an Alabama player in the first round last year. I'm sorry, didn't mean to upset the Alabama fan base, but but I think the indicator was that you had a number of uh, outstanding All Americans on that defense, plus Derrick Henry, and uh, you had one go in the first round. That will change this year. Peter King will join us coming up here in a few minutes. More of your phone calls after this. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh. Well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico, uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, sunshine. (laughs) Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. 